Good morning. Welcome to the Jeff's Army YouTube channel. I am Razzle11. And you can find me on Twitter at Razzle11Grinds. The All-Star break is finally over. And we are going to check out pitching for today, the 14th of July. We have a 14-game main slate uh, with quite a bit of weather issues going on. Uh, so I kind of list them. The worst of them, Kansas City and St. Louis, uh, both are pretty rough, uh, especially Kansas City, which is unfortunate. Uh, the Cubs, the Mets, Orioles, and even the Braves have some slight issues. A little bit in Colorado, but they play through everything, so it's not a big deal. Um, one of the other big things I noticed, all the outdoor stadiums, minus Atlanta, uh, has the wind blowing out. So, a uh, very interesting night of games. Um, not every team has announced a starting pitcher yet, so we're just kind of guessing. Um, so let's just take a look and try to make a pitcher pool quick. Uh, Otani at the top. Obviously, Otani always in play. Uh, minus 160 favorite against the Astros. The Astros have been striking out a little bit more. Uh, they haven't been as dangerous this year. Obviously, without Jordan, it helps um, opposing pitchers. Tyler Glass now, uh, one of my favorite pitchers on the slate, minus the weather issues. Uh, K upside through the roof. Uh, does make mistakes. You know, will allow a run or two uh, most starts. But these K numbers are just through the roof. Um, you know, legitimately can approach 10 Ks in less than five innings. Uh Getting that extra couple days of rest is always huge. Um, very important for somebody like Glass now. He is a minus 305 road favorite. Uh, so we're going to want to pay attention to the rain here. Because uh, if it can hold off and we're fine, Glass now has just massive upside on this slate. Erod, uh, road underdog to Castillo. Uh, hasn't looked... It didn't look good in his first start back. I thought maybe he made two starts, but uh, just the one start back off the IL did not look good against Oakland. Uh, was having a phenomenal first half. Uh, went through a strong stretch, I should say. He had some rough starts then too, but um, went through a stretch of great performances. I don't think I can go there, even though Seattle does strike out a ton. I just don't know that I want to pay that much for Erod uh, at this point. Uh, but there is upside in the matchup. Charlie Morton, minus 267 home favorite against the White Sox. Hasn't been as good at, at home, uh, but last year was dominant at home. Finished the first half out, back-to-back, -back, really strong starts. Uh, it's been really steady uh, over the last month in his performances. I have no problem going with Morton. I'm sure I will have, you know, 20 to... 25% in my player pool. Uh, those numbers kind of get tweaked as the afternoon rolls on, uh, and I break down things a little bit more. Luis Castillo, like I mentioned, a minus 190 favorite. It's been phenomenal at home, taking on Detroit. I know Detroit has bothered us with some of their performances recently against pitchers we're using. Uh, I'm not going to let that change my mind here. Luis Castillo is in a great spot. Uh, pretty strong price point, which, you know, is nice. So I am going to go to Castillo. Uh, Julio Urias, a minus-125 favorite against Verlander, uh, it looks like. Uh, in his second start back off the I.L., threw the ball extremely well against the Pirates. He just has not been good on the road uh, at all. So I'm just, I don't think I'm going to end up with Arias when he's just $100 less than Luis Castillo at this point. Um, don't believe I'm going to be using J.P. France. He did shut down the Angels um, earlier, and he has been great on the road. Uh, I just don't think I want to go there. I, you know, Three runs allowed and three out of his last five, four out of his last... Seven, 
Um, I'm not. I'm just not going to pay 8500 for a guy going up against Otani. Uh, he could certainly be fine. Uh, you know, we we know that the Angel lineup is weaker, obviously without Trout, uh, Rendon injuries. But I don't think I want to go there. Kopech returning from the IL. Uh, I really wanted to be able to go with Kopech, but we can't against Atlanta. I'm not, especially a guy that has some home run issues like he's had. Uh, home runs and walks. Uh, mostly walks that come up and bite him, but then all of a sudden he just has random games where he just walks everybody. Um, so I'm just not going to use Kopech against this Braves offense. Uh, I do think he's going to have a big second half as long as he stays healthy. Uh, so probably somebody we're going to be talking about um, fairly often. Uh, Rodon didn't have any strikeouts in his return. Pitching in Coors, uh, I'm a little interested. I kind of want to see if he's ever pitched in Coors before to get in. Oh, I know he's pitched in Coors. He pitched for San Francisco, obviously. Um, I'm going to look at his numbers in Coors later uh, to get a better feel. Uh, you know, the lack of strikeouts in a you know an amped up situation where he's making the season debut with the Yankees uh, really really bothered me. Throwing 69 pitches. Um, you know, now we're looking at maybe an 85 pitch outing, uh, or they could go a little less and take it a little easier on him. I do have some worries, um, but the opponent is pretty weak overall. Uh, he is a minus 210 favorite. Uh, not really interested in Corbin Burns against the Reds, even though he was just really strong against them. Uh, the Reds at home are a different beast. Uh, Burns has been better on the road. Uh, there's no doubt about that. I just don't really think I want to pick on this game with pitching. Uh, Milwaukee is a minus 120 favorite, but the total is double digits. Uh, John Gray at home. Gray hasn't been great at home. Uh, he is a minus 145 favorite against the Guardians. His strikeout numbers have disappeared. Um, very, you know, very close to to a one-to-one -to -one K to walk ratio, which is not ideal. Uh, taking on a team that doesn't strike all that much, I, I don't know that I can go there. Honestly, I I'm gonna as of right now, I'm gonna leave him out of my pool. Uh, obviously, things change as the day goes on. No interest in Verlander against the Dodgers. Kenta Maeda getting the second half start for the Twins uh, against Oakland. No problems going with Maeda, who's been really strong on the road. Uh, closed out the first half with a great start against Kansas City. Uh, that's a week and a half ago now. Um, so definitely rested. So uh, I'm very interested in Maeda. I, I have a feeling he's going to be somewhat popular, though. So um, it's a little annoying. Um, Bayo against the Cubs. He's a minus 120 favorite in Chicago. Uh, I mentioned how the wind was blowing out pretty much everywhere. It is blowing out in Wrigley, uh, but there's a 35% de delay risk as of right now, according to our weather station. Bayo has been phenomenal. Um, K number doesn't have like elite K numbers or anything, but he's been so good at run prevention. Uh, I have some interest in him uh, at that price point. Uh, the Cubs overall lineup is not, you know, that strong. So I I think we can get away with some bail in our in our pool. Bassett at home has been absolutely ridiculous. Uh, but do I want to take him taking on Arizona? I'm not really sure that I do. Uh, I mean this is one of the the safer games for pitching, obviously, since it's in a dome. But uh, do I really want to pick on that Arizona offense? I'm not really sure that I do. Um, but maybe we end up there. I doubt it. He's going to be kind of on the outside looking in as of right now as well. Miles Mikolas, don't think I'm going to go there. Um, Nats aren't striking on a ton. Uh, St. Louis is a minus 178 favorite, so maybe. Uh, he just hasn't been good at home. He was solid against the Nats in his one start. 
finished the first half with a strong performance against the White Sox. Uh, so there are things pointing towards him putting up a respectable number. Uh, but I think he he might just be owned a little higher than you know what he should, given what his upside probably is in the matchup. Uh, Savali, not going to make my pool because I don't want to pick on Texas at home, even though Savali's been great on the road. Uh, to close the first half off, you know, with back-to-back, very solid starts. An elite start against Kansas City, but uh, Texas is not Kansas City. Dean Kramer, uh, another game that had some weather issues. Baltimore minus 125 favorite. I like the upside of Kramer. Uh, does give up home runs. That is going to be an issue, but there is K upside. Dominated the Yankees to close out his first half. Uh, I'm very much interested in Dean Kramer. Alcantara. Uh, was strong in two out of his last three starts of the first half, but I think I want to see it a little more consistently. Because other than that, I mean, he's just he had a rough, rough first half. Uh, I'm not necessarily going to take him against the Orioles right now, so most likely skipping over him. Zero interest in Hendricks. No interest in Ryan Nelson. Um, Rich Hill against the Giants. Uh, they got to him pretty well, but I do have some interest, but. Just his recent performances have not been attractive. Um, was solid against this, against Milwaukee in this one. I'm just not, you know, I'm a big trends guy. Uh, I don't really see a ton to like. Other than the fact that I just like left-handed pitching against the Giants. Um, but I just don't think I can go there. Uh, he's going to be on the outside looking in as of now. Um, Trevor Williams. Not very strong. Um, did shut down the St. Louis squad. Uh, actually, his best start of the season came against the squad. So uh, maybe there's some carryover with that. But I'm I'm not going to go there. I, I'm interested to see how St. Louis does to begin the second half uh, after the front office came out saying that there will be moves made. Um, maybe they get on a hot streak and they kind of force the front office to rethink their stance. I'm not sure, but uh, just not going to have any interest in Williams at this point. The only guy down here I'm considering would be Paul Blackburn if he does officially draw the start. Um, was scratched, you know, to end the first half and then threw in relief and wasn't feeling good or whatever. Um, a lot of this just really has to do with the fact that he'd be facing the Minnesota offense and they strike out a ton. Uh, so there's a lot of upside in him uh, on this slate. So he's kind of somebody that I'm I'm considering. Uh, probably be like the number eight guy in my pitcher pool. Uh, but there we have it. There's the look. Uh, if you like what I do bring to you, uh, enjoy it. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Turn the notification bell on. Get the alert. Anytime we drop videos here at DFS Army. And if you want to join us, I'll put links in the description below. And you can use promo code RAZ, that's R-A-Z, for 10% off monthly. And as always, best of luck, everybody.